There's a new Slender game in the works. We got an even thinner PS3 Slim. A new weapons workbench has been announced for Dead Space 3. And a bunch of Black Ops 2 news. All this and more in this week's episode of the Reaper Gaming Weekly Update. Hey, what's up, guys? My name is Xsynths. And my name is the Kamikaze. And you're watching the Reaper Gaming Weekly Update, a weekly news show where we talk about news, releases, and any other useless garbage you can find to fill 10 minutes. First up, we got a new Slender game coming up, which is called The Arrival. This next version is a collaboration between Parsex Productions and Blue Isle Studios, reimagining the Slender world with high definition graphics and apparently a nice little storyline. Parsec Productions indicated that will arrive on the PC within the coming months. Next up, we have leaked images of a supposed slimmer PS3 model. The new model is rumored to come in three different sizes, a 250GB, 500GB, and a surprising 16GB model. This could be Sony's attempt at a cheaper version of the PlayStation 3 to combat the 4GB Xbox 360. This is a good choice for people who don't need the extra hard drive space and could use some more money in their pocket. It appears to be mostly the same as the previous model, except for an openable disk drive, kind of similar to the one found in the original PlayStation. Next up, we got news of one of my favorite video game series, Death Space. In Death Space 3, a fun new feature has been added, weapon crafting. Every new weapon is constructed from parts you find throughout the game, in which Isaac is now able to break down and recombine into new weapons of mass destruction to wreak havoc upon those necromorphs. Weapons can also be modified with adapter, attachments, and circuits. I even wonder if Ellie will make a comeback. Great! More Call of Duty news! This time, zombies. On September 19, Treyarch released a short zombie teaser video at the Black Ops 2 site. The video does not reveal too much, but it does at least confirm that there will be zombie campaigns for those that need to kill the undead. And that's all we have this week for news. Up next, releases. It has been a slow week in the world of video game releases, but as you know, Borderlands 2 came out this week. From what I've been reading, amid the toilet humor and hilarious death, things have gotten worse in Pandora. The first game implied that Pandora was sparsely populated, and what population was left was a bunch of lunatics and maniacs. Borderlands 2 finds all of them driven to the edge by a heavily armed guy trying to destroy the planet piece by piece. So, just like Borderlands, you have a shitload of guns. But although finding the guns you actually want is a hell of a lot harder. When it comes to gameplay, it's just like the original. Shoot bandits, help the local wildlife on the endangered list, pick up some weapons, and so on. But that doesn't mean it's fun, it's ridiculously fun. This is a game as much about killing bandits in horrible, painful ways as it is about finishing missions. That said, it's got a pushing difficulty curve. You are expected to complete side missions before advancing on the story, and failing to do so will make you extremely irritated. There is a huge push to level up in the game. Hitting level 50 is achievable before you go into the new game plus. But there is this new badass system, which offers permanent stat buffs for completing goals. Similarly, the procedural weapons system is surprisingly clever. The first game had a tendency, once you go past level 20, to generate crazy powerful guns. Now, you'll find guns have a great benefit but usually draw back to balance them out. Borderlands 2 is a hell of a lot of fun and definitely worth your money. If you are looking for a fun first person shooter, look no further. And then the only other real big release this past week was Black Mesa Source. Black Mesa Source is basically Half-Life 1 completely remade in Half-Life 2 engine. This means a huge graphical update from the original game. All the models, maps, and even some of the sounds were completely redone. This is no simple port from one engine to another. This is a complete overhaul of the game. Those who have played Half-Life 1 will love this game just as much, if not more, than the original. So far, it's not finished. There are still missions and levels that will be added in the future. There's also a multiplayer mode in the works. If you want to pick this game up, it is completely free to play. All you need is a game that utilizes the Source engine. Games like Half-Life 2 and Counter-Strike work great. And that's all we have for this week. Yep, so be sure to come back next week. We will see you then. Goodbye. See ya.